Um, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to talk talk with me today. I know you're busy, but <laughs> uh, my pleasure. Thanks for thanks for the opportunity. Um, so I guess to get started, um, how did you get into film composition? You know specifically, I know, you know what's your musical background, but how did you find um, film and TV scoring as the your your niche to fall into? Um, well, I, I I grew up surrounded by music, and um, and I always liked telling stories, and um, I thought I wanted to be a writer for a long time, but um, I was always into music and um, playing music, and so the two kind of blended, and now I tell stories with music, um, and I like to be um, I like to be part of a creative process with the team, which is what I get to what I get to do being a film composer. Mm -hmm. um, did you did you watch a lot of movies growing up? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, what kind of, uh, what were your favorites, like, composers, too? I mean, what were you listening to growing up? Uh, when I was growing up, I was, I mean, like most people, I was just uh, completely obsessed with John Williams and uh, the scores for E.T., Star Wars, Indiana Jones, all those scores. Those are probably my favorite memories as a child um, listening to film music. And it wasn't until uh, I was a little bit older that I kind of started to discover some of the some of the other great composers, and in, in uh, you know Bernard Herrmann and mm. Ennio Morricone. So working uh, on television uh, proposes probably a lot of different uh, challenges than working on film. Uh, with uh, Warehouse 13, are you working in the moment, or are you aware of where the series is going in terms of the season, or are you, you know, are you composing? Actually, are you composing in the moment? Or are you actually thinking about where your music is heading towards the end of the season? Uh, I'd say a little of both. I, I I read the scripts, and I you know I I hang out with the writers as much as I can before the season starts to kind of get an idea of what's coming, and an idea of the bigger arcs, um, so I can think thematically. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also, you know, once the once the episodes start rolling, it's really um, in the moment, and you know, sp specific episodes have specific needs. Uh, different artifacts have different themes. You know, one episode will feature, um, you know, they'll kind of concentrate more on, you know, Pete's character or Artie's character. So, mm -hmm. um, in that sense, once I'm into the episodes, it's really one by one. And uh, what, what kind of time frame are you working on with uh, every every episode? Uh, at the beginning of the season, I usually have uh, several weeks and um, to to score an episode, and mm -hmm. and often by the end, it's down to you know sometimes just a couple of days. It's different every year. Uh, um, I I always take as much time as I am, as I'm given, and um, mm -hmm. you know try to be as creative as I can in that time frame. All right, and uh, you you were nominated for an Emmy for your uh, your main theme for Warehouse 13, and uh, I guess I never really asked other composers just uh, how important is uh, the main theme to I guess the overall scope of a television score. I mean, do you, when you when you first sat down to write something, was the theme the first thing you wrote? The theme is not the first thing I wrote, and I would say. Um, Every show is a little different in terms of how important the theme is. But in my first meetings um, with the with the producers on this show, we knew from the get-go that we wanted it to be a thematic show, mm -hmm. and they wanted a, a, a strong theme that um, that we could constantly go back to. And so um, it wasn't the first thing I wrote, but it was close to the first thing I wrote, at least the melody of it. And um, And it's been... It's been an amazing resource uh, to to have that theme, to have that go to when I'm scoring the episodes. Mm -hmm. And how how important is the theme to? I mean, a lot of shows have uh, either you know big long opening sequence or something as short as Lost, which is like you know 30 seconds. But how important is it to have such an identifying, I guess, thematic uh, grounding for a show? Well, I think it's very important. I mean, there's there's a lot of shows now that don't have a, a main title sequence or, you know, just have a five second kind of bumper. Mm -hmm. Um, and those, you never get that memorable moment. Um, I, I love shows that have a, a long opening 
sequence with you know the visuals and the music and uh, I think it's very important to the identity of a show. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, when you think, I mean, it's just thinking of all, all of my favorite shows. I guess <laughs> all of them have, you know, the theme stuck in my head, and that's how I kind of identify with them. But, mm-hmm. um, so when you're, I guess, writing music, uh, are you more focused on, say, plot, on like over overall the arc of a season, or are you focused more on characters and trying to expand music from the different characters on the show? Well, I think the challenge for for me and anybody who does what, what I do is to to do all those things at once. I mean, you have to play the scene, and you know, you have to you have to musically follow the story that's happening right then. And you also have to think about the characters, and you also have to think about the larger arcs of the season and what's coming down the road. So, taking all those things into consideration uh, on any in any given musical moment is is essential. And you, I mean, you're not a you know a stranger to TV composing, uh, either. Uh, working on you know NYPD Blue, did, do you consider that helpful? I guess coming into something like Warehouse 13, was it like training training boot camp? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've I've been so fortunate to work with some of the best in the business over the years, and people like Stephen Bochco and and Mike Post were amazing teachers to me, and uh, you know not just about music but about how to function in the in the realm of television schedules and and uh and get things done um well and on time so NYPD Blue was a, was an amazing experience and uh you you sh- you've worked on I guess several short films and films too uh what's the I guess the major difference between TV composing and composing for you know a story that has a finite end in a couple you know an hour or two yeah the uh you just don't get those long arcs that you do in tv um you have you know you have you only usually have a few moments to really um make your mark and uh, but you know the beauty of film is that is that uh usually you have more time mm-hmm. um to really get in and fine tune it um versus tv where you're often under a, a schedule crunch to just get the work done. Do you, do you feel that film is more, uh, I guess, liberating, and you have more time to experiment, or do you do you have plenty of time to experiment working on television schedule? Uh, there's definitely time for experiment experimentation um, in both in both film and TV. It's just they're just so different in terms of. Um, how when you get that time and and how you use it and what the end product is because mm-hmm. you know in film you know I've I've found in the films I've worked on I'm often almost finished with the score when I figure out what I really want to do so I mm-hmm. often then go back and kind of almost start over and in TV you just keep moving forward All right so I guess uh, looking forward. Um you have uh, a couple of films coming out. Uh, uh, some a year in mooring looks uh, pretty interesting. I was looking up, looking that up with Josh Lucas. Have you finished that? Or are you working on that right now? Um, yeah, I finished that. Uh, I, I co-wrote that score with another composer, Antonio Morales, and we did that score uh, at the end of last year. Um, that film is it's a it's a fabulous film, and it was it premiered at the South by Southwest Film Festival mm-hmm. last spring. Um, but I don't know um, when it will be out. I don't. I haven't. I don't know anything about any of those details. Uh, so you co you co compose the score, just you and Tony. Uh, yeah, we 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 wrote it together, um, and uh, it was it was such a an amazing experience. It was such a nice change because the TV season had just ended, and then I got to sink my teeth into this. Um, wonderful little movie it's it's i mean i say little because it's it's not it's small it's it, there's about four characters and mm-hmm. there's no you know there's no car chases it's just a it's a character study it's a very um um indie film it's 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 really great i hope it comes out so everybody can see it uh, so how does uh when you co-compose were you guys working kind of in the same room or you guys kind of split apart and and wrote separate stuff 
Uh, we wrote separately. We recorded um, all the players together when we would write, and then we would send each other stuff constantly. And it was it was really collaborative, and it was I'd never done it before. It was it was really neat. So um, I'm hoping to hoping to do it again. Cool, cool. Uh, so I guess to I guess wrap things up a little bit. Um, are there any any kinds of music or films that you're watching right now that are inspiring you? Um, at the at this exact moment, I'm completely immersed in the world of Warehouse 13. Uh, I haven't seen a movie in weeks, <laughs> um, but uh, um, the last the last film score that really inspired me was uh, Inception. Um, I just I I thought it was brilliant. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on electronic scoring versus uh, orchestral? Um, well, we even if you're working in the orchestral realm, there's always an element of electronics, and it's that it's that hybrid that that I love, and that right. um, drove me towards film scoring in the first place. So I, I feel like both are uh, relevant and, uh, and and necessary. Mm-hmm. And uh, here's one of my favorite questions I like to ask composers, but if you had uh, the opportunity to rescore any film ever made without any disrespect to the original composer, uh, what movie would you pick? Wow. I have to think about that one. I mean, the first one that pops into my head without filtering it is uh, The Mission. Ooh, that's um, good. Yeah, just because I, the, the, I love the score and I love... Um, the way that film was shot and uh, the way it looks and, um, you know, the characters obviously are, are rich and, and well played, but just the, the, the imagery um, in the, in the jungles is something that I would love to take a shot at. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite scores of all time. That's, that's a good pick. <laughs> no, it's a good one. Um, well, thanks so much for you know talking uh, talking with me today. It was a, a real great honor to do it. Oh, thanks. It was my pleasure. Um, so, uh, thanks again, and uh, I wish you the best of luck on Warehouse 13, and uh, uh, good luck at Comic Con in a in a few weeks. Yeah, I'll be there on July 23rd. Um, I think I'm going to be on a composer panel, and uh, we'll be there. Um, trying to get the word out about the soundtrack that's coming out. The season two Warehouse 13 soundtrack will be coming out this summer. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Edward. Thank you.